today I have something really special for you and um, I'm really excited to share this with you. Like I said in my email, or if you didn't see the email, um, I shared this in my Think and Thin Advanced um, Q&A call, I don't know, a few weeks ago. And I would completely forgotten about this technique. I remember using it on myself years and years ago. Um, and I don't know why it came to me during this call. And so I gave, um, I gave the students direction on how to do it. And many of them came back and said how powerful it was. And so um, I, worked on a, I worked on a script today to lead us all through. Um, a breaking up with the food ceremony. Um, and I'll talk more about what that means in a minute. I want to talk about, about um, food addiction for a minute because that's the thing that I've studied the most in my life and that's what I've known as an expert in. Um, when I was going through the height of my struggles with food addiction, uh, the, one of the messages that I kept getting was... Um, that food was actually protecting me from something else. And what I didn't realize until much later was that food addiction was one of the best addictions that I could have because it wasn't drugs, it wasn't alcohol, it wasn't gambling. Think about all the <clears throat> addictions there are out there and how, how terrible many, many addictions are. Um, and while food is the hardest addiction to break, because it's not like other things with alcohol and, and drugs or smoking where we can just stop it and never have it again, food addiction is much harder to break because we have to always eat food. And so that's why I you know, dedicated my life to understanding the brain and how it relates to food and understanding why we have addiction and why we're addicted. Um, and then learning how to, to um, reprogram that um, by just changing the brain chemistry, basically. Um, and so I just, I just wanna offer that perspective here um, because once I got to that place with food, you know, I think a lot of us have a lot of judgment around um, food and our bodies and our weight and um, our out of control behavior around food and you know, we, I know, I know I spun out and cycled out for years and years and years into shame spirals and all sorts of negative critical, um, critical attacks towards myself because I had this problem, but I just, I wanted to offer that little reframe around food and, and how it's actually protected you from some other much worse addictions. Um, there are a lot of other things that you could be addicted to that are way worse than food. And so today what we're going to do is, um, but at, at the end of the day, even still, even though it's a healthier addiction, it's still not a great, it's still not a great behavior and we want to learn how to stop the addiction. And so today um, we're going to, we're going to actually thank the food for being in our lives. We're going to thank the food for protecting us, for serving us, for being there for us because if you really think about it, the way that people use food is um, kind of like having a friend, a best friend that's always there, a best friend that's always there to serve you, to, to make you feel better. And that can be really hard to give up. I know a lot of students, once they start going through my programs, they that's one of the things that they say is, my gosh, my my eating is changing so fast, but who will I be if I don't have this problem? What will I do if I don't have food? And um, it, that's always really interesting to me when that comes up because it, it speaks to how, um, how safe this relationship feels for us. Um, and so I, you know, I remember personally when I did this, I was walking on the trail behind my home one day and I realized that Cookie, it was cookies that I was thinking about. Cookies had always been there to serve me. And I just, I started tapping on myself and I just remembered, I just started sobbing when I realized that the food was actually protecting me and I could have got off, I could have gone on a very, very different track road in my life had I gotten addicted to some worse foods. And so I just spent, you know, a lot of time just tapping and crying and thanking the food and then honoring it, but also saying, you know what, but this isn't a healthy relationship and I want to 
depend on people. I want to, I want to include people in my life. I want to learn how to depend on, on other people emotionally. And I think that's one of the things that, um, emotional eaters or food addicts or overeaters, whatever you want to call, you know, identify as, um, I think that's one of the hardest things for us to do is to learn how to depend on other people. Because most of the time, a lot of us grew up in very unhealthy environments where depending on other people wasn't safe. And so using food was the only way that we knew how to keep ourselves safe. Um, but the truth is now we're adults and we can learn new healthy ways to deal with our, our feelings and we can learn how to develop good healthy relationships um, so that we can depend on, on people and not food. So, um, all right, let's get into it. Um, take a nice deep breath, everybody. Feel yourself grounded in your body, grounded in this moment. And I want you to, I'm going to say a statement right now, and I want you to notice how true it feels for you on a scale from zero to 10. I rely on food to make me feel better. And we're going to start tapping through the points. So just follow along with me. Hi, Ricky. I love you too. Thanks for being here. Alyssa, thank you. All right. Tapping through the, tapping on the karate chat point here. Even though I rely on food to make me feel better, I accept myself and I accept these feelings. Even though I rely on food to soothe me, I accept myself and I accept these feelings. Even though I rely on food as a way to cope with my emotions, I accept myself and these feelings. <laughs> Thanks, girls. I can see your comments. I was a 10 and still, until I started following you. <laughs> That's cute, Valerie. All right, tapping through the points here. Food has always been there for me. It's like an old friend. I can always rely on it. I know it will always be there. It helps me feel calm when I need it. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have food. I don't know what it would be like to not depend on food. It's scary to think about not using food to calm myself down. It makes me stressed out to think about it. Because food's always been there for me. It takes all my stresses away. I know I can eat and then I'll feel relaxed. But I also know I'm using food in the wrong way. And it's not healthy for me. I'd love to be able to just enjoy food and not feel like it has this much control over me. All right, take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Tuning back into your body. Keep tapping through the points. When I think about breaking up with food, I feel really stressed. It scares me to think about not having my food. I don't know what I'll do with myself. I feel anxious about the idea of breaking up with food. It always comforts me when I eat it. It fills me with positive emotions. 
I feel protective of my relationship with food. It's my food and you can't have it. I'm a little scared to break up with, with my food. I'm scared to get over this problem. I don't know who I'll be if I don't use food to soothe myself. All right, take a nice deep breath. Um, so this is the part that I noticed with a lot of my students where they would actually start to feel rebellious. Like, wait a second, don't take my food away. I don't actually wanna get over this problem. I don't know who I'll be if I don't have food. What am I, what am I gonna depend on? So um, let me know if you're feeling that right now because we're gonna get into, um, now this is called, these are called the rebel statements, okay? So when you're feeling very rebellious, you, you voice it, you say it out loud, okay? So tapping through the points, I don't wanna break up with food. It's always been there for me. You can't take this away from me. Typically when you're feeling rebellious, it's like it's like the little inner you that's, that's the rebel. Um, so we like to give it like kind of like a little girl voice. You can't take this away from me. It's mine, so there. It's my food and it makes me feel happy. I know I can always depend on it. It's like a friend. It's my friend. It will never let me down. I'll never be able to break up with my food. I do not want to give up my friend. I know it'll always be there for me. And I'm scared to lose that. All right, take a nice deep breath here. <sighs> Continue tapping the points. But the truth is, soothing myself with food isn't healthy for me. When I do it, I eat way too much. And then I feel bad. And then I eat even more food. And the cycle continues. I know using food in this way isn't healthy for me. So I might be open to changing my relationship with it. All right, take a nice deep breath. Now we're gonna get into the thank you part and this actually, this can typically be the really emotional part. So um, I wrote out some statements. I always like to encourage everybody to use their own words with this because um, it's just better if you use your own words, but because we're tapping together in a group, I'm gonna use some sort of general statements, but if there's something that really feels true for you that you wanna to say to the food, um, then I want you to, to make sure to tap through that and just let yourself feel it and cry and be grateful and thank the food and say whatever it is you wanna say, okay? Tapping through the points now. Thank you, food, for all you've done for me. Thank you, food, for always being there for me. Thank you for protecting me from other unhealthy addictions. In a lot of ways, you kept me safe. I'm grateful to you for helping me. I'm grateful to you for serving me. You've been like my best friend throughout the years. You've always been so dependable. You've always been there for me. Whenever I needed to feel better. But now it's time I learn new ways to make myself feel better. 
it's time I learned how to depend on people rather than stuff he's down with food. So I'm choosing to break up with you because in reality, you're just food. You just lay there. You're not really my friend. You can't really love me. But I still really love you. <laughs> All this sadness, saying goodbye to a longtime friend, All this grief, it's hard to let it go. I've depended on you for so long. All this sadness, this grief, thank you for serving me. Thank you for always being there for me. I'm choosing new, healthier ways to feel better. Like tapping or like exercising. I can find real connections with friends. I choose to feel calm and at, e and at ease now. I feel proud of myself for making this change. Every day it gets easier and easier. And I'm loving how confident I'm feeling. I'm loving how much energy I have. I'm so happy with the way I'm starting to feel. I'm excited about all the new possibilities I have now. I'm making space for more connection. I'm making space for new interests and ideas. I'm radiating so much positive energy I'm beginning to glow from the inside out. I feel confident and I'm so proud of myself. All right, take a nice deep breath. All right, and we're gonna go back to the original, um, the original setup statement here and um, say, I rely on food to make me feel better. And notice how true that is for you on a scale from zero to 10. Okay, now this is just some ideas. If you want to repeat this again, you can absolutely do that. Um, if you want to spend some time tapping with food, if there's one food in particular that you really, really feel like is a particular crutch for you, um, this could be a really good exercise to use for that. Um, and then just sort of observe how you feel around food for the next couple of days. Um, and, you know, just again, come back to this video, repeat this process over and over again. And, um, I think you will have some amazing, amazing results. Um, and you'll notice your, your relationship with food really shifting. All right. Uh, be well, everybody sending you all love. Thank you for being here.